Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Tuesday, September 21st, 2010. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the U.S., 4.30 p.m. in London, 12.30 in Hamilton, and 10.30 in Mexico City. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. Well, just a few minutes ago at the United Nations, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad wrapped up his speech. Uh, the salient point was, we will never ever recognize the Zionist regime, presumably referring to Israel. So more of the same coming from there. We'll go to our main news today. Uh, some economic news in the U.S., actually a bit of a surprise. Construction of new homes in the country surged during the month of August to the highest level since April. Housing starts rose 10.5% in August, uh, compared to a four-tenths of 1% increase in July. Uh, economists had been expecting actually a drop. Uh, so, in fact, one would normally consider this good news. The stock market is uh, preoccupied with the Federal Reserve meeting. It's down about 19 points right now. Speaking of which, the Federal Reserve meeting is going to occur this afternoon in about uh, two hours' time. Uh, traders are betting that the Federal Reserve may signal an expansion of its quantitative easing program of Treasury's purchases. The Fed is expected to keep the monetary policy unchanged, i.e. the interest rate, uh, with the focus being the wording of its policy statement for any suggestion that might make a transition from targeting ultra-low interest rates to targeting its own balance sheet. You may recall that back in August, the Fed began reinvesting the proceeds of its mortgage-backed securities holdings through new Treasury purchases. The 30-year T-bond is doing very well. It continues to see robust demand. It's up now to 3.844%. Uh, um, we'll keep our eyes on that. Presumably, uh, uh, Mr. Bernanke, uh, uh, prefers to move in very, very slow increments, as well he should, so it shouldn't be anything terribly overwhelming. Uh, a quick blurb from uh, AIR Worldwide, Applied Insurance Research, insured losses from the damage caused in Bermuda by Igor are likely to be under $100 million U.S. Uh, of course, the day before yesterday, Igor came within 40 miles of the island. Uh, the damage seems to be limited uh, to some infrastructure damage, uh, specifically the Flats Street Bridge and the Bermuda Causeway, uh, both of which are open by now. And uh, also a number of homes had some structural damage as a result of falling trees. But other than that, it does not seem to have been uh, too bad a hit, nothing at all like Fabian. Where is Igor today? Well, uh, let's get to that. Here's the uh, hurricane map. Uh, we'll get to Igor in a second, but Igor is uh, up meandering around uh, Newfoundland. Uh, Lisa uh, has appeared now. That's the one we identified yesterday as the low. It's now become an actual uh, tropical storm. Uh, let's look at Igor. It's uh, barreling northeastward uh, toward Canada. Uh, look at that path. Isn't that amazing? It's, it's going to go right up there uh, uh, through the Labrador uh, um, sea, actually. That's what that is, that area of water between Greenland and Labrador. And then it's going to uh, impact the area northeast of Hudson Bay. Uh, right now, a tropical storm warning and a hurricane watch is up for the coast of Newfoundland. Uh, the storm is uh, moving along pretty rapidly. Uh, the Canadian company Husky Energy has evacuated workers from two drilling rigs uh, working in the White Rose offshore oil field. Uh, the storm is saying just above the hurricane strength. It's got maximum sustained winds of about 75 miles per hour. And as of 6 a.m. this morning, it was about 240 miles south-southwest of Cape Race in Newfoundland. It's moving to the northeast, get this, at 41 miles per hour. That is a fast-moving storm. You know, let's look back at Lisa now. Lisa has formed far out in the Atlantic. It's the 12th named storm of the season. It's got maximum sustained winds of 40 miles per hour. It's about 530 miles west-northwest of the Cape Verde Islands. And it's moving north at about 5 miles per hour. Now, you have to remember, look at where it's going. It's going to pick up plenty of fuel. Those are very warm waters. Um, there's a uh, reasonable possibility that uh, this could develop into something. And, of course, we'll keep our eyes on it. We'll go to a word now from our sponsors and come back with the rest of the news. Every day, the world wakes up and goes to work. 
pursuing the unique opportunities that lead the global economy forward. The complexity and close connectivity of today's global marketplace is a true modern miracle that can create unparalleled success. But it takes confidence, passion, innovation, and understanding. Enabling opportunity. Protecting capital. Engineering innovation. Investing in your future. Ensuring continuity. Finding the right balance. It takes Aeon. The Boulder Daily Camera newspaper is reporting that that fire, which destroyed 169 homes in Boulder County, has already produced insurance claims of $217 million. The fire, known as the Four Mile Fire, destroyed homes and cars and caused property damage with smoke damage. Homeowners have a year to file claims, and this is what's come in already. Uh, Carol Walker from the Rocky Mount Insurance Information Association said that the fire had been devastatingly costly, her words, because most of the homes in the path of the fire were main homes rather than mountain cabins or vacation residences. There were also more luxury residences than the most comparable recent event in Colorado, the 2002 Hayman Fire. Uh, the most interesting thing, though, is that the uh, rapid relative increase in the insured loss between the two fires is a strong indication of the extent to which primary upmarket residences in the U.S. are being built in the so-called wildland urban interface zone and the danger that this represents for insurers in terms of potential losses. Previously when insurers looked at those zones they figured in uh, log cabins and hunting lodges. Now they have to figure in seven or eight million dollar primary residences of hedge fund traders. I'll take that back. CalPERS, uh, the biggest uh, pension fund in the United States, as like every other pension fund, was losing about 25 percent of its value over the past several years. But that didn't stop them from doling out the six-figure bonuses and raises to its top employees. The Associated Press is reporting that the California Public Employees Retirement System tried to reduce the bonuses but was contractually obligated to, play, to pay them. CalPERS plunging value came as stock values tumbled around the world. California, of course, was suffering its worst economic decline in decades. But virtually all of CalPERS investment managers were awarded bonuses of more than $10,000 each with several earning bonuses of more than $100,000 during the 2008-2009 fiscal year. They were receiving the cash awards as the fund was losing $59 billion. A CalPERS spokesman said that the bonuses are based on the fund's performance over five years, not just the year immediately preceding the bonuses. This encourages managers to think long-term rather than short-term. Hello. Talk about a publicity problem. Out in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, there's a 21-story building called the Electra Tower. It's a combination of condominium residences and offices. It's located at the intersection of Nelson and Burrard Streets. Well, over the weekend, uh, somebody decided to pour a two-part foam mixture into cavities under part of the building as part of a concrete restoration project. Unfortunately, the stuff they were pouring in caught fire and began to emit a noxious cloud through the whole 21-story structure. The people were evacuated. It is unknown, unknown, how long these people will be unable to return to the building. Specialized consultants have been brought in to analyze the chemical. Um, some people are saying that their insurance companies are denying claims, categorizing it as a chemical incident not covered under standard insurance. 
Others are saying that the insurers are telling the policyholders that they will not exercise the chemical exclusion cause. It's thought that the chemical used in the process is something called isocyanate, I-S-O-C-Y-A-N-A-T-E. It's unknown what the effects of exposure to that chemical would be. Some good news in Europe, Irish, Greek, and Spanish bonds rose after those governments sold about 9 billion euros worth of securities. This is easing some concerns that the Spanish, Greeks, and uh, Irish are going to face uh, difficulties as they finance their debt burdens. Ireland auctioned about a billion and a half euros of 2014 and 2018 debt. Spain sold 7 billion euros of 12 and 18 months and Greeks sold 390 million euros of 13-week securities. Um, some of the numbers that are, are coming out are uh, approximately as followed. Um, the uh, 500 million euros of debt sold by Ireland for 2014 had an average yield of about 4.76%. Uh, uh, Spain sold five and a quarter billion euros in a one-month uh, term with yield of about 1.9% and Greeks sold those 390 million euros in a 13-week term at a yield of 3.98 percent. Uh, that's a pretty hefty yield, actually. Well, for our final story, um, all too often we don't run stories like this uh, when you have uh, thoroughbred racing stables that have unfortunately have gone up in smoke and the horses end up uh, burning to death. and. There are many other instances where uh, we tend to treat livestock relatively cavalierly. Uh, all of these animals are insured uh, for one reason or another. And um, there was a fire in the UK uh, last evening where about 15,000 chickens perished. Uh, a fire, do a fire uh, in West Norfolk um, lit up a shed on a farm where the chickens were stored. Uh, crews uh, were unable to get into the facility because uh, the roof contained asbestos and there were fears as well that chemicals were stored in the shed. Uh, an investigation into the cause of the fire has begun, but even as of the time we're giving this broadcast, firefighters have been unable to enter the, uh, the barn. Uh, they're saying, the firefighters are, we will not enter the building yet because it's structurally unsound and we do not go in where there is asbestos. Meanwhile, the uh, firefighters are saying this is a tragic incident. We care a lot about animals in these situations and passionately about people, and it's always distressing. Um, it is unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Uh, these are animals that are procured, raised, and cared for by man until it's time to slaughter them, and at least during the time that they're being brought into uh, life, uh, they should be cared for. So. An unfortunate situation. If we have any breaking news, like if the Fed does something really wild and crazy this afternoon, we'll come back and tell you. Uh, but presumably, uh, things will remain status quo and knock on wood, there won't be any need to come back and talk about any disasters or claims. And we'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you for watching.